Hello friends, welcome back to this video on probability and statistics. In this video, I am going to discuss about the Gaussian random process. Like the way I discussed about the Gaussian distribution separately, here also I am coming up with the Gaussian random process in a separate video because it is really important. So in this video, we are going to discuss what is Gaussian random process, what are the mathematical parameters by which we can classify a process to be a Gaussian random process. After that, we will be discussing about the properties of Gaussian random process as well. So first, we should know what is Gaussian random process. I hope you remember what is a Gaussian distribution. You can go and watch my previous video on Gaussian distribution because without which it is not possible to understand Gaussian uh, random process. So now, coming to the Gaussian process. So when I talk about the Gaussian process, this equation is satisfied for any xt to be a Gaussian process. So if I consider xt to be a Gaussian process, the xt should satisfy this equation, then only I will call it as a Gaussian process. So what is this equation? meaning so here i have gt it is also a random process yt is also a random process so i can take gt to be any function so for any function gt if the mean square value of y comes out to be gaussian distribution so i hope you remember what was gaussian distribution so for any value of gt if I consider xt to be a Gaussian distribution, the integration from 0 to t, gt to xt dt will give me some yt and the mean square value of yt would be a Gaussian distribution. So that time xt is called a Gaussian process. So for xt to be a Gaussian process, I can take any function, I can integrate xt over that function and I will get another function. So now this function is also following the Gaussian distribution. By the way, its mean square value is following the Gaussian distribution. So now as I written here, mean square value of random variable y is a Gaussian distributed random variable for every gt. So I can take any function gt, then xt is called a Gaussian process. So I hope now you are clear that what is a Gaussian process. So now mean square value of y should follow Gaussian distribution. And I hope you remember what was Gaussian distribution. So I can say f y of y is equal to 1 upon sigma root 2 pi e raised to power minus y minus mu square upon 2 sigma square. So this equation represents my Gaussian distribution. So now mean square value of y is following this Gaussian distribution. So now here mu is the mean and sigma square is the variance so that sigma is standard deviation. We all know these things. So now from this equation I can calculate the normalized Gaussian distribution as well. So now ga normalized Gaussian distribution is considered at the case when I take mean is equal to 0 and variance is equal to 1. So when mean is 0 and variance is equal to 1, so now this would turn out to be 1. This is 0, this is 1. So now I am left out with 1 upon under root 2 pi e raised to power minus y minus 0 square would be minus y square. So I written it minus y square upon 2 into 1 square, so upon 2 only. So now I can represent the normalized Gaussian distribution as n 0 comma 1. Here 0 represents the mean and 1 represents the sigma square or the variance. So now I hope you understood how I can classify any function, any random process xt to be my Gaussian random process. For that the yt mean square value should follow the Gaussian distribution and the Gaussian distribution is this and if I say the normalized Gaussian distribution it is denoted by this equation. So now coming to the properties of Gaussian distribution. So now the properties are really interesting. So if I apply xt, so xt is my Gaussian random process, I am applying it to any filter whose transfer function is ht or impulse response is ht. So now I am getting yt. 
So when xt is Gaussian random process, then yt would also be Gaussian random process for any linear filter ht. So now as I written when xt is applied on a stable linear filter, so this is my stable linear filter, yt obtained is Gaussian process when xt was Gaussian. So when we apply a Gaussian random process to a linear filter, we'll always get a Gaussian random process. So now coming to the second property, the second property states that if I find out that a Gaussian random process is wide sense stationary, then I have to say it is strictly stationary as well. So I hope you remember what was white sense stationary. I find out the white sense stationarity for one and two order only and for nth order I can classify it strictly stationary. So everything I find out mean variance or any statistical parameter autocorrelation correlation if I find it it is stationary for two, order, two orders, then it is stationary for nth order also. So I can say the Gaussian random process is wide sense stationary, then it has to be strictly stationary as well. So now if someone finds, ask you to find out that a Gaussian random process is strictly stationary or not, then what we will do, you will find out that it is wide sense stationary or not. If you will find out that it is wide sense stationary, then you will directly say, yes, it is strictly stationary as well. So now coming to the next property, the next property states the mean and the autocorrelation function of my Gaussian process. So the mean is given by, so mean here is in the time domain, so mean mtj represents the mean. So mean is given by E of x t j. So where j is changing from 1 to n. So now j is representing the different instant of time. I am taking the mean of x over different instant of time. So now cx represents the autocorrelation function. So c is equal to E of x t k minus m t k into x t j minus m t j. So c is cx is my autocorrelation function. So now coming to the next property. So the next property states that the if the autocorrelation function, I already found out what is my autocorrelation function. If I find out that the autocorrelation function is zero, then I cannot say it is uncorrelated. It is uncorrelated only with the condition that xti are independent and I can represent xti as xt1 into xt2 into xt3 and so on. So when I can represent my xti like this, so I can say these are independent and if the autocorrelation function is also zero, then I can say these are uncorrelated. So the Gaussian random process, if someone asks you to find out that it is uncorrelated or not, first thing you should know the autocorrelation function. If the autocorrelation function comes out to be zero, then you will find out these are independent or not. If you can represent the Gaussian random process as a multiplication of various times, so you can say yes, these are independent as well as uncorrelated. Otherwise, you cannot say these are uncorrelated. So here I will be winding up my session on Gaussian process. I hope you understood each and everything which I discussed here about the Gaussian process and its properties. Still if you have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment box and I will try to resolve it as soon as possible. I hope you like this video. If you like it share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel and push the like button. Thank you.